This is our monthly training webinar where we go over, you know, how the app works, kind of a general overview um, for new and, you know, some, some seasoned veterans as well that might be on the call. So we have a mix of, of some trial users, some new users, some customers. So um, hopefully this is useful for everyone. If you do want a more in-depth um, training session, we'll, we'll have some, some contact information up in just a second. You can always request uh, a, a more, more detailed training session on a particular topic if you're interested. So once again, thank you, and we'll go ahead and get started. So um, what is DTRM? Very, very quickly, I mean, DTRM is a web app, so it's a solution that's really meant to help you design, document, deliver, and manage your, your uh, two-way radio networks, or any other network for that matter. Um, so today, m m I have myself here, Christopher Sisto. I'm the DTRM product manager. I'll be the one taking you through this, uh, this sort of quick training session and, and tutorial. And I also have Chris Mulcahy here, who's our account executive on the line. So. Uh Hi everyone. Uh, yeah, I'm happy to to be part of this, and it's it's always good to to get uh, you know training from uh, our product manager. And yeah, well, you'll see at the end here that you can reach out to me anytime and uh, do further uh, private training with me. Uh, and you'll see my email address: sales at d3m or so sorry, sales at teldio.com. Um, and yeah, you can get me there. Sounds good. Thanks, Chris. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So on on the docket today. And um, we'll be going through a few things. Um, so we'll be doing a live demo and training, of course. Um, so I'll be doing a quick overview of you know, how the app works, what are the different components, how they interact with each other. So things like topology and rack diagrams, how they work together, how they always sync with the project inventory. And we'll be going through how to create a doc DTRM document and share it with a customer. And um, we'll be talking about how to manage your icon library, how to turn things on and off. Um, and also how to create new icons if you're missing anything, or one of my personal favorite features, which is the icon bundles. Um, I'm a big fan of those, and you'll probably hear me say that a couple of times today. Um, and then the other thing, too, is how to use areas to manage larger projects. So that'll be kind of one of the more, we'll call it pro tips. Um, so we'll be going through that as well. And then we'll take a quick minute at the end to talk about some, some of the new features we've just released and some of the upcoming ones we have, if you're interested. And of course, we'll have a Q&A session at the end. Um, so... Go ahead and jump in here. So before we jump into the actual app, I just want to quickly recap again, what, what, what is the purpose of DTRM? What is the point of this tool? Why did we create it and what are we trying to accomplish? Um, you guys know this way better than I do, but I mean, if you look at any network deployment, um, th there's a lot of different steps here, right? I mean, you go from pre-sales to proposal delivery to installation in your post-sales support. There's all these different steps along the way, everything from requirements gathering to getting to, you know, ordering the equipment to the network going live and, and trying to upsell them in the future. This is kind of the cycle that you go through with pretty much every single customer, I'm sure. Um, so the idea here is DTRM is here to help you along that process and to give you a solution to help you throughout these different stages. And um, this is just a quick diagram to show you, you know, here are all the different things that we help with. I mean, the, the DTRM app is really composed of six components. So there's three different types of diagrams you can create, topology, rack, and floor plan. And um, there's the quote tool that we help, that, that we have as well. Um, it manages your project inventory as well as allow you to create live documents to share with customers. And if you look at that cycle we just talked about, essentially, um, these are kind of where each one of these different components can help you. I mean, ultimately, they can help you throughout the entire process. But just to really show you how ingrained DTRM can get in your process, if you're using it to its full potential, um, it can really, really help you manage that, that, that customer journey, I, I guess we'll call it. Um, so, yeah. Uh, one more quick thing before I jump in the demo, and this is one of the things that I came to realize is some of our customers that have been using DTRM for a while aren't using our DTRM icon libraries. Um, we've worked with, you know, in the tour radio industry, we've worked with um, some of the biggest brands like Motorola Solutions, Hyterra, Icom, and Kenwood, and we've actually built out full icon libraries that I'll be showing you today. If you haven't done this yet, if you're using D3M and you don't have these icons preloaded and you're a certified reseller of those brands, please go ahead and request those. It takes us two minutes to enable them for you. We're more than happy to do so. Um, so if you go to our website and you hover over the contact um, button here, you'll see that there's a section where you can request manufacturer icons. Go ahead and click on that, fill out the two second form, and we'll be happy to enable it for you. So I really encourage you to do that if you haven't done that yet. Um, this will make your DTRM experience way better than it currently is. And without further ado, let's jump in the tool. So here we have it. There we go. So I'm logged into my, my, uh, into my account here. So again, for some of you, this may be a little bit, you know, a little bit repetitive if you are used to the tool. But again, I want to make sure that even the new users on the call today get a good, good grasp of what DTRAM is. So I, I've gone ahead and logged in here. I'm in my account. And what I'm seeing here is a listing of all the different projects that I personally have access to. So as a user, you know, you can see here that I'm logged in as Christopher Sisto, part of the Teldy organization. I have access to all these different projects. Um, and essentially, I'm seeing 
whether I'm the owner of a project or someone has shared it to me, like for example, here, my colleague Frank Castro gave me view access to a project. Um, you can kind of see the different projects and what, what you have access to. At any point you can search. If I'm searching for a specific, you know, a specific customer, for example, Abbott Nutrition, I can bring that up very quickly um, and see, um, see their project, open them up if I wanted to. I can also search by any project data. So think of this kind of like your, your inbox where each and every one of these line items re represents either a customer you have that's been deployed or someone that you have that's in pre-sales. For example, here I have, you know, the status is complete. I've completed that project. It's an existing customer, whereas these are pre-sales. So you can also assign different statuses and things like that. So I won't get into too many details, but it gets really powerful where you can start sorting things by status, by the different offices you might have, um, and so on and so forth. So let me go ahead and create a new project. Um, let's say that we are working, for example, here on a higher agency. Um, we're gonna be doing a uh, initial system design for their new radio network. Um, we're in pre-sales mode. Um, we'll say that the network mode will be IP connected. Um, and we'll be deploying this, for example, here we are in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada here. And we're hoping to deploy it by the end of June. Um, so one thing I'll mention here is that you'll notice at the very top that there's a project type. There's something called topology versus something called floor plan. Um, these are the two different types of projects that we offer. So topology projects are meant to be more of a logical view of your network, understanding how things are connected, what composes that network, how are they gonna function. Your floor, floor plan projects, on the other hand, are meant to be more about how things are laid out. Um, so for example, if you're in the video surveillance space, or if you wanna understand you know, um, you know, how far of a distance uh, a repeater will, will, will be able to cover. So it's more about the physical location of devices, overlaying them on top of a floor plan or a map and showing that. So there's two different types of projects. Today we'll really, really be focusing on the topology di diagrams, but keep in mind that we do also have floor plan. Um, just to kind of give you a quick preview of that, I do have a slide here, it's on the back of mine, but you can see here how in our floor plan view, when you drag out um, an icon, you can actually start showing the coverage, um, the angle it might cover if it's something like a camera and so on and so forth. Um, so again, I won't focus on that today, but I just did want to mention that we'll focus on the topology, which is what most of our, of our users um, use. So I'll go ahead and click start building. And there we have it. I'm essentially presented with a brand new project. Um, so before I dig into the actual tool and start building something, I wanna just take a step back here and kind of give you guys an idea of, of, of what D3M is really all about. And really the whole point of D3M is that not only do we make it very, very easy for you to actually design a network and give you sort of you know, a pre-built icon library with all the manufacturers you work with and all that in there um, and some engineering rules to help guide the right, the right, um, the right design. The other thing we actually do is um, we also sync all the data within your projects. So as you design your topology diagram, you can be sure that it'll sync with your inventory you can be sure that if you make a change in your inventory, it'll sync back to your topology. If you make a change to your rack diagram, it'll warn you in your topology diagram that they might be out of sync. Um, it can auto-generate a quote. From that quote, you can also auto-generate a proposal. So every, every time you make a change in DTRAM, you can rest assured that everywhere else in the app, things are staying in sync. And that's something we, we pride ourselves on because the whole idea there is that we're trying to save you a whole bunch of time, make you more efficient, allow you to create more quotes, and ultimately land more business, right? Become more professional to that customer, um, and, and close more deals. So with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and jump in and I'll try to kind of remind, remind everyone of that, of that concept, um, but just keep that in mind as we go through. So the first thing I have here is I'm on my topology diagram. So this is meant to be sort of where I start in D3M. On the left-hand side here, I have my li icon library, where I'm seeing all the different icons that I have access to. If I ever wanna modify this library, you can see here that when I click on, on this button here, um, I can actually see all the different manufacturers that I, I've been that have been enabled on my company and I can turn things on and off however I want. I can either turn off on and off manufacturers, I can turn off categories, or I can also change the size of the icons, show how things are sorted and so on and so forth. Um, so I'm pretty happy with what I have right now. Just kind of showing you guys here, we have D3M, we have some high Terra icons, some Motorola Solutions icons. And if we look, for example, at the Motorola ones here, um, you know, it's preloaded with all the different mobiles we might have, uh, that they sell all the different portables, um, all the different repeaters. This is all equipment you probably know way more about than I do. Um, the point being though that we have all that preloaded in there for you to use. So if I take, for example, this SLR 8000 repeater, um, just to kind of show you the level of detail, it actually looks like the, 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 the product itself. Um, it's a vector graphic that will never lose quality, um, no matter how much you zoom into it. So it's going to make your, 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 your network diagrams and your proposal look, look that much more pro professional. Um, more so if you turn on this ports view here, so this is gonna be a really important at Ethereum to remember, turning on ports here allows you to see the actual physical ports that exist on that device. So for example, this has two radio time slots, a data port, a LAN, a transmit and a receive port. 
Um, so, you know, you can always modify those, um, but the idea being here that this is how you're going to connect different devices is by turning on and off these ports. Going one step further into sort of the customization we've done with these is if I double click on there, what you'll see is that every single one of the properties or things you might want to track about that device have been preloaded in here. So if I take, for example, that this is a Motorola Solutions SLR 8000 repeater, um, all the defaults that I might want to have, the default radio IP, the default fault Kai group, and so on and so forth are all in there. Um, and you can add as much or as little detail as you want. Um, for example, we said it was an IP connected network, so I can actually go you know, put IP connected um, and I can decide to display that on the canvas. So I can show as much or as little information as I want. Um, you can always add more properties, delete them, it's up to you. We just try to give you some very good defaults to get started. So that's really the basics of sort of an icon and how it works. But just taking a step back here, you know, as much as I talked about the different icons um, that come preloaded from manufacturers, we do also have some great generic ones. Um, so, you know, for example, if you just want to put in a, in a, you know, a generic duplexer for here, um, you can then type in the manufacturer if you want to, if it's something that we don't currently have in the library. Um, or, you, you know, same thing with, you know, we have some default repeaters, some default portables. So if you want to look more generic, if you don't want to go manufacturer specific, you can do, you can do that as well. Um, but the other thing to keep in mind too is that you can also create your own icons. Um, so, I mean, we do our best to give you a great icon library preloaded with a whole bunch of equipment, but I can guarantee you right now that we won't have everything you need. Um, I mean, <laughs> I'm just gonna be honest with ourselves here. We could spend our whole lives creating icons and there's always gonna be some sort of acceptance. So what we try to do is make it as easy as possible for you to create your own icons. Um, so I will get back to this, but just keep in mind that at any point, if you need an icon, you can click on new icon here. Um, you can select an image, you can uh, upload your own custom images, create ports, and configure the properties that we talked about earlier. So it's really easy to create that icon. Once you've created, the really nice thing is that it will actually be saved in your, in your icon library here. Um, and from there, you can use it for every project moving forward, and you can even promote it to your colleagues so they can use it as well. Um, so here, you know, this is the difference between my organization library. So this is the library that everyone in my company sees here on, on, on my account versus over here, I have my own private library with my own different icons that I might've created and so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and start designing a network here. Um, so I'm going to create a quick one just to show you guys how it works. Um, I won't spend too much time on this, but I want to kind of show you guys the basics. So the first thing I want to do is drag out some icons. Um, so I'll drag out, for example, a couple MTR 3000 repeaters here. Drag out two to get started. Um, I'm going to go ahead and also drag out um, a couple duplexers over here. And then, you know, I know my library very well, so you're noticing that I'm scrolling up and down very easy and I know what I'm, what I'm doing. But at any point, keep in mind, you can also search. So if I'm looking, for example, for a dipole antenna, click on the search button there and I can start searching. Oh, perfect. Dipole antenna. I want a generic dipole antenna. So I'm going to drag that out and so on and so forth. So you can see here, we do have a whole ton of different icons here that you have access to. Um, and you can at any point start searching there. And if you're missing, go ahead and create another one. Very easy to do. Um, so here we are. Now that I've actually laid out my icons, I want to start connecting my devices. Um, so notice here that I, you, know, you have to make sure that if you're in this mode, you won't be able to connect icons. You have to turn on the ports to make your connection. So I'll turn on my ports. Now that I can see them, I can start connecting different devices. So I'll drag up TX. Notice how as I make connections here, it automatically kind of knows where to go. The TX is going to TX, RX to RX. So if you're, you know, if you're not an engineer and you're not confident, we help you there. Um, and if you are an engineer, it's gonna make you a lot faster, right? Um, so let's go ahead and add, for example, here a switch. Um, so notice here again, this, this is a switch, therefore these are IP ports. If I wanna connect it, notice how it's automatically sticking to that IP port, it's not going to the other devices. Um, so very quickly here, you can make a, a, a pretty powerful connection. Um, and you can see here how I can modify these. At any point, you can click on a connection and you can start modifying how it looks um, and so on and so forth. You might also have noticed that one of the things that happened too is that um, we have different colors of connections. So what this is doing is it's showing you what's an IP connection, what's an actual um, IP connection versus, for example, a coax connection. Um, the same way that I showed you earlier when you can double click on an icon and start showing different information about it, um, I showed you earlier, you can do the same thing on the connections as well. Um, so if you double click on this connection, you can tell, you can start labeling this. So I could say that this is an IP connection, for example. Um, I could show if I wanted that this is a CAT, a CAT5 cable or a CAT6 cable, I guess is where we're at. I can start tracking the length and all that kind of stuff and I can display the information any way I want. Um, you can also move that around so it looks a little bit better. And very quickly here, you can you know, put together a diagram that looks quite professional, that looks consistent and that looks like the products that you're actually selling. It looks like the MTR 3000 repeater. Um, so let's start adding a couple of radios here, for example. Um, so let's say I'm looking for a SL7550 radio. So again, I can just type that up. 
Um, there we go, SL7550E, that's what I wanted, perfect. Um, and it, or I could just kind of browse through, if I'm not sure what I want, I can go down to my Motorola library, browse through here and say, okay, well, I also want some, I, I know that they're gonna need some um, XPR 7550E, so I'll drag that out as well, and so on and so forth. And if I double click on those again, I can start showing whatever information I want to. Um, and I'll do that over here as well. And the other thing I want to do is I also want to rename these. So I want to rename these to the functional groups that are going to be in there so that the customer understands how many radios are in each group, right? Um, so over here, if I double click on the name, I can actually call it, for example, um, you know, housekeeping. We said we were doing the higher agency, so it's a hotel. So I'll say housekeeping. And um, we'll say over here that this is security, for example. There you have it. And if I double click right now, I'm just showing one radio. I obviously want to change the quantity of this. Um, if I double click on it, what you'll see is that I can change that quantity to, for example, um, 12, or actually housekeeping will probably have more radios than that. Let's say 49 radios and hit set. What you'll see is that I have 49 radios in that group. Same thing here with security. If I wanna say 12, I hit set. Now there's 12 radios in that group. Now what I mentioned earlier is that with DTRM, as you design this, this diagram, as you design this network, everything stays in sync in your project. So for example here, if I go into my inventory, what you'll see is that every single item that we've added so far, um, so we added two MTR repeaters. Um, if you remember earlier, we noted that, you know, um, you know, we showed this information, it's still there. You can start making changes here if you want and it'll update on the other side. Um, we just added, for example, 12 security radios and 49 housekeeping. They're all there and they're all listed individually. So if you want to start tracking individual things like a radio ID, I can start, for example, autofilling that. A little trick here, same thing as in Excel, when you click and drag to autofill, you can do that here. But if you double click on that square there, you'll see that it'll go all the way to the bottom, and it's actually gonna autofill all the way down. If you have a thousand radios, that becomes very useful. <laughs> um, so here we are, for example, housekeeping is radio ID 100 to 148. Now, because this is my inventory, and I'm kind of seeing all the different devices, I expect that my diagram updated, right? So if you go back to topology, what you'll notice now, um, is that if I look at those housekeeping radios and I display the radio IDs, it's actually now showing me 100 to 148. And um, so it's showing me the range of those different devices. So really powerful tool there where as your project is gonna evolve and become more and more sophisticated and you're gonna add more information into here, you can rest assured that everything will stay in sync. Um, one of the questions I get all the time now that I've shown you this inventory view is a lot of people ask me, well, can I export this? I want this in Excel or I need to import it into another system. Very easy to do. At any point, if you wanna export individual components of D3M, you click on this button up here, and this is your export project button, um, and you can export the inventory, you can export your different diagrams, your technical, your icon diagram, or your rack diagram, um, technical being the port view diagram versus the icon being the icon view diagram. So this will download images of your diagrams, whereas the inventory will download an Excel spreadsheet. Um, I won't do that right now, but the idea being that um, yeah, you can export that at any point and take your data out of D3M, import it anywhere else it needs to go. Um, so before I move on a little further, one thing that I did forget to mention um, that I think is pretty key is obviously this is a live collaborative tool. Right now we're all logged into webinar and you're all seeing my screen happen in real time. Um, but one of the biggest advantages of D3M is that it's a collaboration tool, right? Um, so at any point um, you can share this with a colleague and actually work with them in real time. Um, so how the way, the way sharing works is at any point you can click on share here. And there's two real ways to share. You can share this with, um, with your entire company at once. So I could go here, click share with the Teldio organization. So all the licensed users in my company, and I can give them either view, edit, or edit and share privileges. Um, or I can share it with individuals. So over here, for example, let's say that I want to share it with uh, my colleague, Chris Mulcahy, who's on the call here. I just start typing and you can see here, there he is, Chris Mulcahy. Um, and then I can decide whether Chris can view, edit, or edit and share. So again, it's pretty obvious here, but the idea is if I give him just view privileges, he'll be able to see everything but not modify it. If I give him edit privileges, he'll be able to edit anything um, and edit and share. He can actually um, edit and share it with others. So I'll click share here. And what happens once I click share is that now my colleague, Chris, has gone ahead and received an email saying, Chris Sisto went ahead and shared this project with you. Um, I can see him right now. He's on a computer next to me and he's just opening up in his inbox um, that link. And what it does is it logs him into D3M and he's popping into the tool. And there you have it. We can actually see that Chris just joined the project. So he's on his computer right now. Um, he's just joined the project, and if he drags anything out at any point, um, if he drags out a duplexer or whatever whatever he wants to, doesn't really matter. There you go, he's dragged out a camera. It happened instantly, like I just saw it dropping it on his computer, it just showed up on my screen very quickly. And once it's been dropped in there, um, he can move it around, I'm gonna see everything in real time, and I can start working on it as he's working on it. Let's say that this is an access camera, 
um, I can start displaying that information. You can basically work together um, in real time and, and collaborate on projects. So, I mean, if you think of, um, you know, you, you might be have multiple offices or work with projects that with, you know, distant consultants or whatever it might be, it's a really good way to get on the same page and to be able to work on it. Either you're working on it in real time and you're on the phone, um, or you just want to share it with someone and have them make the necessary tweaks or approve it and then send it back to you. Um, the really neat thing is that as you take different actions in D3M, every single action that we've taken since the beginning is being tracked. So I can actually tell here that Chris Mulcahy a few seconds ago added this wireless link. Um, so any, any data that's actually relevant, like the fact that he rotated, we don't really care, but anything that actually changes the data in here, um, we're actually going to see that logged and I can go back at any point and see what was done and by who. Um, so really powerful tool. And again, it, it really allows people to stay on the same page, collaborate um, on potentially complex networks, whether you're troubleshooting with a supplier, a customer, or a colleague, um, it's really, really gonna help you. Um, so yeah, that's the collaboration piece. I will also show you later on how you can share with a customer as well. Um, right now we're talking about sharing with other licensed users. So again, you click on the share button and this project tab here is where you can actually share with, with colleagues. Um, but we'll be talking afterwards how you can use the documents to share with customers. So I'll get back to that in just a bit. All right, so what I did so far is I showed you, you know, a, a pretty basic network that we put together. I'm going to delete Chris's camera because it's irrelevant here. <laughs> Sorry, Chris. <laughs> um, but here we have our first, first um, I guess we'll call it our first site. Um, I'm going to use this areas tool here. So this is a really powerful tool that I'll bring back a couple, couple times throughout the call today. Um, but if I click on areas here and click and drag, what you'll see is that I can actually define that site. Um, so I'm going to rename this, for example, um, the Ottawa site where we're located here and I'll say that this is this is the Ottawa site of this network and what we're going to do is we're going to create a second site um, so I'm going to scroll down here now I could do the same thing again and drag everything out one by one and um, but I actually created um, a bundle um, so one of the really neat things about D3M is not only can you create your own custom icons save them share them with the rest of your company but you can also do that with what we call bundles um, and bundles are really powerful in the sense that you can start creating templates for your company and really save a ton of time and also in, in, introduce consistency, right? Knowing that, you know, if you have turnover in your company, if someone happens to not be there, the next person putting in a diagram, it's going to look very consistent. Um, it's going to make you faster, allow you to put, submit your proposal quicker to the customer and so on and so forth. Um, so here we have it. I've dragged out this icon bundle. And what you can see is that, you know, it came out ready to go. Um, you know, I might want to make a few tweaks, like for example, you know, this was meant for a manufacturing company. And actually in this case, we only have two repeaters. And um, we can say that, you know, everything else looks good. As far as the applications, we haven't determined that yet, but I know that they want applications on this network. Um, you know, I'm going to delete these because we're not, these are production radios, but we're actually in a, uh, in a hospitality environment. So actually instead of deleting them, I can just rename this. I can rename this, for example, to housekeeping on the second site, double click, Maybe they didn't have 100 radios in this group, they actually had 25, so I'll modify that. It is gonna warn me here because I'm deleting data, um, so no problem, I'm okay with that. And there we have it. You know, This is, for example, our second site where we have two repeaters, we have 25 radios, 12 in maintenance. For those of you that are technicians on the call, I understand this might, not be, this might be overkill as the network. Um, don't, <laughs> I'm not the expert when it comes to that. I'm just trying to show you how, you know, having these pre-built bundles, how quickly you can modify them. Um, you can delete parts, you can move things around, it's not because it came out as a bundle that has to stay a bundle. It's just a really good starting point for you to work from. Um, so here we have it. You know, we've created this second, this second site. We're going to also create an area around it. So I'm going to click and drag. And I can, for example, rename this to the Toronto site. So we have our two different sites. Um, we might want to show that these two are connected, um, that these two are connected via IP. So what I might want to do is just, you know, search for a cloud icon. So again, I click on the search tool, drag out a cloud. Um, and what I'll do is I'll switch to my ports mode because I want to make connections. At any point, you click on port there, and then I'm going to connect it back over to my switches just to show that there's a, connections be a connection between the two. Um, if you don't like these sort of angled lines, one of the things I, I want to show you as well is that at any point, what you can do is you can double click on that line, and you can actually switch it from angled to straight. You can also do all sorts of things like change the styling, the color, the width, all that kind of stuff very easily. Um, but in this case, I'll just make them straight. That looks good. I'm happy with that. Oops, click the wrong button there. And I'll turn my ports back on. And um, one thing I'll mention as well, for those of you that are on the call that are more seasoned users, I'll call you. Um, at any point, what you can also do is you can click on the project settings and you can change your default connection style. So right now, you notice when I'm creating a connection, they're always being angled. 
at any point you can say, well, from now on, I want in this project for my connections to be straight, to come out straight. Um, so those, that's a default that you can set for every project. Um, so to save you some of the time, depending on how you like things to kind of look and feel. So there we have it. We have our two different sites. Um, just to kind of show you how powerful these areas get, not only is it about showing the delimitation about the different sites, but what's really cool about it is imagine that we had a 10 site system, and I forgot to mention this is an infinite canvas, but imagine we have a 10 site system, um, a very large system. At any point, what's really cool here is as we created these areas, it created these kind of anchor points where I can just click on Ottawa site, click on the Toronto site, click on fit, and really navigate it across that project very well. One of the other advantages of this, um, of this tool we have is that at any point you can also go into your inventory and you can actually filter by those areas we created. So right now you see that my inventory is showing all the different stuff in that project. If we had a 10, 10, site, system, a 10 site network here, this would get very, very large and convoluted. And what's really nice is at any point you can just click on the filter there and say, I just wanna see the equipment in Ottawa and boom, it's filtering by that. So really, really powerful there where it helps you kind of keep things organized and managed especially if there's multiple people collaborating on here um, and the networks get bigger and bigger. I mean, we, we have some customers I know that are man, managing 20, 25 site systems. Um, and this areas, this areas tool that we have up here that I showed up here where you create an area becomes very, very powerful. for um, Other quick things we have here I didn't mention is you can also turn on a grid at any point. I know a lot of people, if you're like me, like things to be very neatly aligned. Um, if you turn on that grid, it'll snap to that grid and allow you to align things any way you want. Quick tip there. Um, but yeah, so here, here we have it. Um, we've created our topology diagram. I'm pretty happy with that. Looks good. You know, um, at this point, what I might want to do is show how this is going to look like on an actual rack. Um, so what I'm going to do here is quick to switch my rack. Now I showed you earlier how the topology always syncs with my inventory. The same way your rack diagram is going to also try to sync with your, will also, will also, I should be constant, <laughs> will also sync with your inventory. So if I click over to the rack, rack side here, first thing you'll notice is that it switched the view here. Um, if you remember earlier, I explained that we have our organization library, we have our my library, which is your personal icon library, and we also have this sync tool as well as the search. The sync tool is really meant to show you when you're in a diagram, here is the difference between this diagram, so my rack diagram, and my inventory. So these are all the different items that I've included in my, in my diagram that I may not have included, sorry, that I've included in my topology diagram and that, that are therefore in my inventory, but that I haven't added to my rack. Um, so the idea here is that I would just add a rack. Um, you'll notice that by default it adds, for example, that it's a 42U rack, which is the industry standard, but at any point you can change that if you want, it's showing you the size there. So I've just added one rack. I know I'm gonna need two racks, so I'll go ahead and add the second one right away. If I double click on the name, just like I did in the other diagram, I can rename it. So we can say, for example, that this is the rack, you know, rack number one, so on and so forth, rack number two. There we have it. And then what I want to do, I can double click on it as well and show the properties of that if I want. If I wanted to show, you know, the mounting type, the capacity, I know that this is a 19 inch rack, so I can type that in and show it. Um, same idea here, 19 inch. So you can show as much or as little as you want. We have some default properties here, but at any point you can create your own. Um, so for example, the location, if you wanted to, um, I can add that and say that it's Ottawa and so on and so forth. So you can very easily kind of add that information as you need it. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to start populating this. Um, so what I'm going to do is, again, this is showing me the inventory I have in my project right now. And as my, I build my diagram, I'm going, to decide, I'm going to decide, is this something that deserves to be in one of my racks? Or is it something that should be ignored because it's not a rackable item? So I'll start adding my repeaters here. So by default, you'll see that they just kind of snap. It's showing me here that it's a 3U repeater. Um, if that happens to not be right, you can always modify it very easily. In this case, I know MTR 3000 repeaters are 3U, so I can add that in. That looks good. And then again, you start adding your different items, creating, creating your network. Um, the, de the antennas I know are not going to be on there, so I'm going to ignore it. Um, so you keep sort of ignoring your icons. And if I scroll down here, you'll see that these are all the icons ignored in this diagram. So it's just showing me that these are things I've decided not to put in there. So I'm going to actually go ahead and ignore all the antennas because they're not going in my rack. Um, same thing with the portables. I'm not going to be including any portables, so I'm just cleaning all that. I'm also not going to put a cloud in my rack diagram. Um, so just cleaning everything up very quickly here. Um, everything else looks good. That control station I'm going to ignore as well. And I think, oh, a couple more radios here. There we go. And actually, I think everything else that's left here is actually going to get racked. Um, so the idea here, through it, add all the different items. I'm going to add all my duplexers over here. And so on and so forth. So just building that out. There we go. 
So really easy, you can see how quickly I can kind of modify things, put them in the right spot. Um, this might not be logical again, for those of you that are technicians on the call, please don't get mad at me. <laughs> um, I'm just kind of showing, you know, what is the possible here, right? Um, you guys know way more about how to design a rack diagram than I do. There we go, add a switch. And yeah, again, the idea here is I'm just trying to clear everything out and make sure everything's actually included in my rack. So this is a rack mounted monitor, we'll pretend that's taking eight U's. And here we have it. So now what's essentially happened, if you notice from that, I'm just gonna delete this. You'll notice that here right now, there's one item left that I, it's used in another diagram that, that hasn't been synced with this rack diagram. The second that I take it out, you'll notice that this little notification is gonna go away. And that notification is really meant there to be there to show you that now you know everything's in sync. So if I switch to my topology, to my rack, to my inventory, there's no notification here. And I know that my inventory has either been manually ignored because it's something I know I don't need, um, or it's been added to my rack diagram. So I know everything's in sync. I, I can be sure there's no errors. My boss doesn't get mad at me or, or whatnot. Um, and it looks very professional in that sense. Everything's kind of consistent. The one thing you might be asking yourself now is what about items that actually have to be added to the rack? Um, so things like power strips, um, you know, patch panels, things like that. So same idea here. Earlier I was working from the project inventory sync tool. This is the tool meant to sync with your inventory, but I can go back to my library and say, well, actually what I want to do is start adding um, some other things. So for example, I want to add, um, let me just search here. I want to add a power strip. Um, so I add, for example, a power strip here, add a power strip here. Um, you know, I want to add a, a AC DC power supply, whatever, whatever else it might be, right? You can, so for example, a patch panel. There we go, I'll add a 48 port patch panel and so on and so forth. So you'd start adding all the different items that you think you need here. Um, but you can imagine that once we've added these things and I go back to my topology diagram, now it's going to tell me, oh, here are four things you have in your rack diagram that you haven't added to your topology diagram. So it depends on, on the person. I know some technicians like to show everything. They'd actually want to show this power strip and show that that's how these repeaters are getting power. Um, we don't see that as being the common use case. So what, what we would typically do here is just say, go ahead and ignore these icons. These aren't things that deserve to be in a logical representation of my network. So I can just go ahead and ignore all of them. Um, and, and again, I'm just making sure that everything is in sync. These have, of course, all been added to my inventory. So if I go look, I do have power strips in here because they are part of the things I'm actually selling and supplying to that customer. So I want them in there. Um, so that's basically it. Um, if there's any questions, so we haven't seen any go th come through yet. Um, I must be super clear, which is great. Um, but if you guys do have any questions at all, um, just feel free to, to, to type them up right now um, and we'll be happy to answer them. Um, so I'll keep going here. So we've seen rack diagrams, or sorry, we've seen topology diagrams. We've learned about the libraries, um, how the rack syncs with your topology and your inventory. And um, one of the quick things I wanna show you as well is the, our quote tool. So I don't wanna spend too much time on this today. Um, it's not the point of the call, but I wanna show you how powerful this can be. If at any point I click on the quote button here, what this will show me is which icons have been associated with an actual quote part. Um, so if I switch to my quote, you can see these have been pre-associated pre-associated, if I switch to my quote, you'll see that all these different items have actually been, um, been added to my, uh, to my quote. Um, so really the idea there is that you can actually go in and upload in, under organization settings. If you're an admin, you can upload your quote parts. Um, so upload a CSV version of, of all your different parts that you might have. Um, you upload them into the system. And then from there, basically, um, what you can do is you can double click on an icon um, and you can actually start searching, like for example, here, repeater. There we go, it's showing me all the repeaters that I have in my, in my parts list database with the price and the cost. I can associate it, and if I click on that, it associates with it. And that's now been you know, up to date, updated in my quote. Um, so you can see that repeater got added. And really the whole idea there is that if I've actually shared this with my colleague, Chris, who's my engineer, for example, and Chris said, um, to me, Chris, sorry, that's confusing, but <laughs> Chris tells me, um, this looks good. You know, you can go ahead and quote this, go ahead. I just have to visually make sure that every single icon here is overlaid with this quote part um, so that I know that everything's been quoted. I haven't forgotten anything. Switch to my quote and everything's been automatically generated for me. I can see um, my unit price, the quantity, the total price, what the cost is, what my margin is, and make sure that I'm staying above that 40% threshold that my, my boss wants me to do. I can go ahead in here and say, okay, well, let me go ahead and add, for example, um, install support. That's something we charge for. We charge $180, I'm gonna add 10 hours. Perfect, I've added that. Again, I know my cost is here is $80 on that, so I'm above my margin. Um, you can add discounts, shipping and handling, tax, all that kind of stuff, and it'll give you kind of your financials, your expected cost, your gross margin, and your expected margin percentage on the deal. 
Um, so I don't want, again, I don't want to focus too much on this. I could spend a whole session on this quote tool. If you have more questions about this, let us know. Um, but uh, that is something that we do. And, and again, if you've taken the time to actually create your bundles and pre-associated the prices you want with your bundles, you would just drag out that bundle the same way that some of these were pre-associated. You drag out that bundle and boom, you'd have a quote ready to go um, and, and modify. Was there a question there, Chris? I saw a question come in. Uh, yes, from Greg with uh, the RF jumpers. Does the system recognize RF jumpers with actual connector types? Um, so that's a good question. So there's no, there's no um, specifics for that, I guess. Um, does the system recognize it? I mean, it hasn't been configured that way. Um, really, it's a matter of if you were to add RF jumpers, you can actually, you know, you can, when you create a new icon, you can actually select the ports that, that are associated with those, 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 uh, those devices and make sure that when you're connecting them, those ports are actually compatible. Um, so actually, good point there. I'll actually show how to create a new, um, a new icon. So let's say that I click on new icon here because I don't have what I need. Um, I can upload a custom image or I can use one of the ones that we've created here. Um, if I click upload custom image, it's going to allow me to upload something from my actual computer, any image that you might have on there. Um, but in this case, let's say that we want, I'm just going to quickly, you know, say that we want to add a, um, what are we going to do here? Let's say that we want to add a dispatch console. So I'll just search for that. Um, we happen to have a dispatch console here. Um, I could also upload my own image. Like I said, if you want the actual image of the manufacturer, um, I can increase the width here and the height so that it looks good. So I'm pretty happy with the way that looks. Um, and then this is what I was talking about here where you can decide the different ports on the devices. So for example, here, if I click on this port, um, this is where you can select the different types of connections. So this is what will guide those engineering rules about what connects to what. Um, so for example, here, um, I know that this is gonna have an IP port and it's my LAN connection. So I've gone ahead and saved that. Um, I can move it around if I want to. That, that's probably a better spot for it. Um, same idea here, I would click and, and depending on the type of connections, and if you feel some of these connections are missing, you can let us know, we're happy to add more if needed. Um, but this will determine those engineering rules of what can connect to what. Um, so I'll go ahead and add, for example, as well here a data and say that this is, for example, a USB for the microphone. And there we have it, that looks good. And then the next step is to actually um, assign assign uh, properties to it. So I want to track, for example, the manufacturer. Um, I might want to track the, uh, maybe the, the model number. Whatever you think is important. Remember when you double click on that item and you see all the different properties, or when we were in the inventory of those different columns, this is where you can determine those for that icon. So the model, maybe the IP address, um, and so on and so forth. The manufacturer here will say is, for example, Teldio. Um, you can pre-assign a quote part to it. If you pre-assign a quote part and you drag it out, it'll automatically get added to your quote the way you want it to. Um, so here I could search, for example, dispatch console. Uh, do I have any ready here? Let's just go ahead and pretend that it is this Ekehau part. <laughs> I may not have had one preloaded for that. And I'll call this dispatch console, the name of the icon. Go ahead and save it. And now I've saved it to my user library. So what you'll see is that I have this new dispatch console that's been added. I can drag it out. If I double click on it, you'll see that it has the manufacturer by default. I can always add individual, for individual situations, I can modify this, I can add new properties, and it added that quote part by default. Um, so of course, because I've dragged this up to my canvas and I go to my quote, now this Ekehau dispatch media is there. Um, so all that always stays in sync and makes sure that, um, that yeah, that, <laughs> that you can reuse this. Um, just one quick last thing is that at any point you can also click on this and you can actually decide to promote this, this up arrow, allows you to promote it to your company's library. So if you created a new icon of something that you think the rest of your company can benefit from, you can always request that promotion um, and that will be promoted to your company library at which point um, all your other colleagues will see it in their organization library here. And um, was there another question there, Chris? Yes, we, we have another one here, a good one. Uh, and I think that the answer is pretty easy. Uh, how, how do you create a bundle? Yeah, that's a great question. I showed you guys how to use them, but I didn't show them how to create it. I forgot about that. Um, so really easy to do. What you can do at any point is you just select, let's say I want to select just this Ottawa site we created together earlier. I select the whole thing, right? So I click and drag to select. Once I've selected everything, I right click on any of the icons and you'll see that it says here, save bundle to my library. I click on save bundle to my library. We'll rename this, for example, I'll just call it um, webinar because that's what we're doing right now. Save it to my bundle. And what you'll see is that from now on, I have this webinar bundle and I can drag it out in any project moving forward. I've dragged it out here and you'll notice that it looks exactly like what we did. 
we can now modify it. I can delete things, modify it, and so on and so forth. Um, but yeah, very quickly, we've created that bundle. And now every project moving forward, I can utilize that bundle and save myself and my team a whole bunch of time. So the same way I just showed you how you can promote a dispatch console, you can also promote a bundle. So the same way, you just click on that, that icon, you have this new option here now to promote, and you go ahead and promote it um, to your company library. So really straightforward in that sense, very easy to do. I'm gonna delete this just to keep things simple, uh, but you guys saw how, how very, very quick and easy that is. Um, I mentioned earlier, this is one of my favorite features. I just think that it makes everyone so much more efficient. You know, if you have a couple technicians that start using this in your company and start populating, um, it's really gonna make, make it a powerful tool for your company and, and make you guys more consistent um, and a lot quicker to put together those, those diagrams so your customers choose you over your competitors. So that's the idea there. Um, so there we have it. So we've talked about topology diagrams. We've talked about rack diagrams. We've talked about the inventory of the quote. And um, we have about 15 minutes left here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to the documents. I do want to quickly mention that another feature we have is that at any point, you can also upload files here. Um, so you can upload things like code plugs, pictures of the site, whatever files you think that anyone would, would need. So like I shared this with Chris Mulcahy here earlier, this project. Um, if these are files that I know we both need for the install, I can upload them here and know that wherever Chris is located, if he has, happens to be on site to do that install, he can always download those files, work off of them, and so on and so forth. Um, so that's really the idea there. Very straightforward feature. I won't even spend time on this. Um, but what I do want to do is go into, um, go into the documents. Um, was there a question there, Chris? I was just going to jump in and let you guys know that, uh, yes, we will uh, be trying to, uh, we'll, we'll send you a, a recording of the webinar. Oh yeah, so there's a question they're asking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Question, so. yeah, so we'll definitely be recording this and posting on our site and we'll send you all the link afterwards so you can share it with your colleagues. So not a problem at all. Um, all right, so moving into documents. So I mentioned earlier that you know with Dethrium, everything stays in sync. Same will be true for documents. Um, I did show you how you can export your inventory in Excel and your different images. These are meant to be kind of a quick export to bring them into other programs. But the point of documents is to put together that professional proposal for your customer. It could be a proposal for sales. It could be a, 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 a statement of work, a deployment checklist, whatever you want. So when I go to create a new one, what you'll see here is that I have some default templates that we've created for our company. And um, anyone can create that, uh, sorry, anyone who's an admin in your company can create new uh, document templates and then share them. So really the idea here is that you can create a company standard for, for your company so that it looks more professional. So let's say here, we do wanna to put together a sales proposal. Um, I'm gonna select the sales proposal template and hit create. When I hit that button, what's gonna happen again is it's gonna take my company's template and take all the different pages and information it likes to put and then take all the project specific data and put it in the right spots for me. So you see here that it took my company logo, um, it took the office address, you remember at the beginning, we called it initial system design for a new radio network, the customer's heart regency. All that has been populated in the right spot into my cover page here. Um, if I scroll down here, page two is our proprietary statement that all our lawyers make us put in there and the trademark notice so that you, I'm sure you all have your legal mumbo jumbo as I call it in there. Um, so you can easily have that in there. Perfect, I don't need to think about it. I keep scrolling. Um, notice that you know on the header, there's also my logo. There's also our default letter. So this is you know, my kind of template. You guys probably today use Word templates um, if you're not using D3M. Um, same idea here. So you can see here, you know, typically this is where you know, you're, you'd want to replace the text and, and add more information. Um, but what you'll notice when I click in here is what's really cool too is we have what we call um, dynamic tags. Um, so we've used these placeholder tags here. Um, and essentially, every single spot where in my template I put, put the project customer name, put the project customer name, put the network mode, the deployment date, all that will automatically get populated for me when I create this document. So it's gonna save you a ton of time. And again, ensure that consistency. The fact that you know that all of your sales reps when they're presenting something to the customer are gonna be consistent and put in the right information without wasting any time and getting that proposal to that customer quicker. Um, so if I click out here, again, you'll see Hyatt Regency, Hyatt Regency. Um, in this case, I'm actually gonna go ahead and um, I'm gonna modify the name just to show you guys. It looks like I have a mistake in my template here. Someone must have been playing with my templates. <laughs> Um, but I'll go ahead here and uh, I'll modify the name of the customer. So we'll say Hyatt Regency, and I'm just going to add A, B, C, D, E so we can see it very clearly. I'll hit save, and what you'll see is that everywhere in the project, it automatically updates that. Um, so A, B, C, D, E, F, it's all everywhere here, everywhere where we had that product name. So again, that's going to stay up to date. Same thing on the, the header and so on and so forth. So really powerful there. And um, when it comes to, you know, here where we can automate this, it's not part of the project settings, but I can start saying that it's, for example, the RBX application. Um, it works like a normal text editor, very easy to use. 
and there we have it. So I've done all the work that I need to as a sales rep. I keep scrolling down here and notice that, you know, it's a bit about Teldio, um, you know, our mission, our value, our mantra, and why work with us. Notice how it's also, you know, we have a, a, a rolling um, reference customers here where it's actually a GIF showing all the different customers we work with. So you can even insert animated Im images. Scroll down, this is where I'd start typing the solution, describing it, um, you know, select the appropriate project descriptions and so on and so forth. And then as I scroll down here, notice that it automatically put in my network diagram here. Um, so I have my topology diagram there, my rack diagram. Um, as far as creating these templates, it's really easy. All you would have done is in your template, you would have dragged out insert topology here. And because I inserted that in my template, it automatically put my, my topology diagram here. Now this is gonna look a little bit small here, right? If you think about it, um, because it's a larger network, it, it, it's gonna look too small for the customer to read it. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna take a second here and show you guys how to make it bigger, how, how to show each site one at a time. Um, so I'm gonna switch this, I added a page, sorry I didn't show that, but <laughs> you basically go ahead and click here, insert page, it adds a new page for you. You can decide whether you want the header to be turned on or off, I want it on in this case. Whether you want the page to be landscape or portrait, I'm gonna make it landscape so that it shows the diagram better. I'm gonna actually drag out the rack diagram down here, drag it to the next page, because I wanna add something in the middle. So I've added that to the next page, rack diagram. Now I have my topology diagram. I'm just gonna rename this, for example, to topology overview diagram, because I think it is important for my customer to understand that there are two different sites and here's how they're con connected. But what I wanna do next is I actually wanna add a second diagram below it, and I wanna show more detail about each site. So I've added the diagram, I just clicked and dragged it in here. And then if I click on this pin, this is where the areas come back. I mentioned earlier that we'd, we'd be talking about these areas a lot. If I pin this, for example, to the Ottawa site, it's gonna zoom in and just show me that Ottawa site. I'll do the same thing again, I'll drag a second diagram, and I'm gonna pin this to the Toronto site, and boom, it's pinned it to that site. So what you can see is that I have my overview, my Ottawa site, my Toronto site, and if I want, I can add, for example, a text block in the middle to add a title. Um, you know, I could call this, for example, uh, you know, individual sites, or I can, you know, put the names, doesn't really matter. So individual sites, I'll go ahead and rename this, or, sorry, I'll bold it, make it a little bit bigger and maybe I wanna add a bit of spacing above it. So that looks good. So I'm showing the overview and then the individual sites one at a time. So there we have it, we have our diagrams. Of course, if any changes get made at all to this diagram, at any point, if I go back to my topology here, for example, and I add, for example, that dispatch console, I'll add it just at the bottom of the Toronto site here, and we go back to our, um, back to our document, of course, this is gonna be updated. It's gonna stay up to date, so I'll scroll down here. What you'll see is that um, now it's added that dispatch console. And same thing on this diagram, that dispatch console has been added. So everything stays up to date. That looks really good, really professional. I'm happy with it. Next page is my rack diagram so the customer understands. If I wanted to explain how this works, I would just you know, drag out a text box, type to explain whatever I need to explain about this for the customer to get what I'm trying to sell. Scroll down here, you might want to add something like an inventory list. So earlier I was showing you how to manage that, but now you want to present it to the customer. You'd select here, for example, add all inventory lists. Um, or you can add it by area. So this is really cool. You can do it by device and um, by connection or whatnot. But what's really cool here is you can say, I just want to show the Ottawa equipment, right? So I click Ottawa. And what it's going to do is it's going to add a table for each type of device you have. Um, right now, we're also showing connections. So right now, we're showing that there's an IP connection from switch port 4 to MTR3000 port 4. You might not want that. You might not want the connections. You just want the actual equipment. No problem. You just go ahead and hide that. Um, hide it. There we go. So I've hidden all the connections and now I'm just really showing the equipment. Um, and then you can also start modifying what you're showing here. There's way too much information. Obviously I didn't take the time to populate all this, um, but if you want to hide it, no problem. You just go ahead and hide the different columns that you don't want the customer to see. Very straightforward here. Um, and once you've done sort of hidden all the information you don't want, you click done and it's going to reformat and that looks pretty good. Um, so same idea there, same thing with the actual radios. Right now it's showing a range of you know 100 to 148 radios. I can just show the, those expanded if I wanna show all the detail of every single radios, um, or I can show that collapse. So it's really up to me on, on how detailed I wanna, I wanna show that information. Um, if I make a change, of course, this is gonna update. Because I've actually filtered this to my Ottawa site, if I were to go ahead and drag in, for example, a dispatch console in here, it will add a table and automatically update. So you know that any change you make in D3M will always, always, always update. So you're not gonna have those mistakes um, of forgetting to add something, you know, because you're, you're working in three different programs. Um, the quote automatically got added to page to page five here. Or I don't know what page we're at, sorry, but to section five. Um, quote automatically got added. Notice how it's not showing the costing. That costing was really meant for you to understand that you're hitting your margins. But of course, we don't want the customer to see that. 
You might also notice that we hid the pr product code. So that's something you, you can decide whether or not you want to show part numbers. Um, in this case, we don't want because we don't want our competitors price shopping. So we've just hidden that. Um, so that looks good, really happy with it. I scroll down and this is of course where I have my proposal acceptance. So I've included in my proposal template um, and the ability for the customer to just sign off on this. Um, you know, if I was all well set up, this could have been done in less than a half hour. I submit the proposal to them and hopefully they sign off and close the deal. Um, so that's the idea with the proposal there. I can PDF it and actually send them, bring them a printed copy if I want. Um, or you can actually use DTRM to live share with customers. So if you remember earlier, I mentioned that we'd be able to actually share this with a customer. Um, so if I click on share, now because I'm in a document, remember earlier we were on the projects tab, if I go into the documents tab here, this is where I can see the proposal I've created, so the sales proposal, and I can decide um, if I wanna send them an email to share that or just take this link and type up my own email. So in this case, I would just hit copy link. Um, I would send that link to my customer, you know, paste it, and basically the customer is gonna see this exact proposal that we had, um, they're gonna see it non-editable, of course, they can just view it. But what's really cool is when they get to sections like the diagram, for example, um, they can actually zoom in, zoom out, pan around, switch from technical to icon mode. They're gonna by default see what you actually showed them, um, but everything will be very, very powerful in that sense. Um, so really easy to do. Um, it really makes you guys look very professional when you're working with a customer. You can send it to them, get on the phone with them, walk them through it. Um, and know that any changes you make, they're gonna see in real time. So really powerful there. Um, I wish I had more time here. We are kind of running, running close to the hour, so I'm gonna have to cut it there. Um, but I do wanna mention if you have any questions at all while you're using the app or, or anything like that, at any point you can click on this chat bubble here. Click on it, we're very responsive. If you have any questions at all, you click new conversation. Um, our reply time is under 20 minutes now. Um, so at any, at any time, we're usually quicker than that to be honest. Um, but yeah, just go ahead and ask a question. You can also search for answers in our help center. And um, we have a ton of articles there you can utilize. So we're always there to help. Don't hesitate. Um, so a couple more quick, quick messages. So I did say that I'd take two minutes here to talk about some of the recent features we've done. Um, so one of the things we did is we also improved our tutorials. So just switching quickly back to the app here at any point, if you click on the menu bar and click on tutorials, you'll notice that there are tutorials for every section of the app. At any point you can click on one, for example, for documents, and it will actually talk you know, talk, walk you through the basics and some tips about how to use these different sections. So do keep that in mind at any point, you can click on the tutorials there and bring them up. And um, we also just created the floor plan diagrams that I alluded to at the beginning. So feel free to create a project and test that out. Um, rack diagrams, which is a feature I talked about today, which is brand new. And there's also the Z index. So at any point you can actually right click on a device and you can send them to front or back on your canvas. So these are just some of the things that we've released in the last month, month and a half. Um, as far as what we're working on, um, some upcoming features, we will be um, improving the DTRM library, so we're always looking to improve that. And um, we wanna create more and more icons that are better suited for rack diagrams. We have quite a few in there. Um, but if you do have some requests, feel free to let us know. Again, you can create your own and upload your own, but if you want better default ones, let us know. We're happy to make them for you. Um, as far as rack diagrams, so we are working on two features there. Um, one of the things we're doing is a, a lot, giving you a tool to actually reserve some space in that rack. Um, so say this is, for example, used by the customer or by another vendor or whatever it might be, so blocking that section off, um, as well as being able to create shelves and place multiple items on the same row. So you might have noticed earlier that I was just showing things on a single row. Um, you can, when, when that tool will come out um, in the next two or three weeks, um, you'll actually be able to add a shelf and then add things into that on top of that shelf and place them how you want. So that's another thing. And then as far as floor plan, plan diagrams, some of the stuff we're working on is allowing you to set a scale on your diagram. So you'll be able to upload a floor plan, set a scale to it, um, and actually um, really show things to scale, actually show how far a repeater will look on a map um, coverage wise, um, and then create connections between your devices and calculate cable distances. So you'll be able to actually click around and actually you know, get a really good sense of how, much, how many feet of cable you're gonna lead, need and so on and so forth. So these are all features we're working on that'll be coming out over the next few weeks. Um, so we're really excited about those. If you have any questions, let us know. Very, very quickly, for those of you, whether you are a customer or you're looking to purchase this, this solution, keep in mind that Motorola, Hightower, and ICOM have all approved this in their co-op programs. Uh, there's different, uh, different levels of how much they reimburse. Um, but keep in mind, again, if you're a customer, go get that, 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 uh, that invoice reimbursed if you've already paid, uh, if you haven't done so. If you're a prospect, definitely inquire with your manufacturer to, to get that co-op approved. So as long as you have those funds, you'll get that reimbursed. Uh, so just a quick, quick message for you guys there. 
So thanks a lot for your time. Um, we are running low here, but we will stay a couple extra minutes for any questions we might have. Um, if you do have any follow-ups, want to set up private sessions for your team, um, training sessions, you can email sales at dthermnetworks.com. Chris Mulcahy is, is going to follow up with any of those inquiries. Um, I just said it, but request private sessions. We're happy to do them for you. Um, try D3M if you haven't already. I assume you have, but if you haven't, try it free for 14 days um, and let us know.